So experimental approaches, we know the genes of interest, which are essentially genes encoding for proteins with GGDF or EAL domains. So uh, uh, we try to uh, replace the gene and uh, try to put back the delete the gene by complementation experiments, and then also try another uh, experiment where we try to overexpress a known uh, diguanine cyclase or a phosphodiesterase. And then, of course, uh, once you have uh, 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 these strains available, you, uh, we assay them for or characterize them phenotypically, determine cyclodigenic levels, try to uh, do colonization assays and infection and invasion assays to see whether um, uh, the particular uh, mutant strains that we generated would actually stick to the surface of the seed. And uh, I'd like to point out that again, uh, the the the, the Delicia pulcra R11 um, uh, seaweed disease model path system is. Uh, sort of a, a model system that we're trying to establish and it's not as um, uh, uh, readily uh, manipulable to, to say so because you know, yung, uh, it's a, a new sort of model system compared to uh, readily available uh, um, model systems. So for the gene deletion strategy, this is just a, a very uh, a generic diagram, but what we did was to actually just replace uh, the GGDF uh, EAL domain uh, uh, protein gene with the antibiotic resistance cassette, place this in an in, in E. coli donor strain, which is E. coli ST18, and then do conjugation experiments because now we, uh, it's difficult to actually transform uh, R11 so by direct transformation. So that's why we chose to uh, do conjugation experiments where in you put in your uh, plasmid construct inside the donor strain and allow them to do biparental mating for E. coli to transfer the plasmid onto R11. And then uh, try to screen for colonies and for the mutant strains. So the uh, overexpression strategy is just that we want to modulate cyclic IGMP levels and uh, nicely uh, uh, Nicholas Barod, which is a colleague at the laboratory, has this uh, plasmid construct readily available. So we borrowed uh, this uh, plasmid construct from him. Uh, the one containing uh, the WSPR gene is a, a plasmid that is a construct that would uh, uh, encode the uh, known diguanylate cyclase from Pseudomonas aerogenesis, TA2133 is a gene encoding in the phosphodiesterase. esterase. So uh, once we, uh, the idea behind this experiment was to modulate cyclic DIGMP uh, levels in the cells. You, you, have, you know you have a diguanylate cyclase, so which means that we insert this inside the bacterium, the cyclic DIGMP pools will increase. And we, once we put in a, phosphate, a, a, a gene encoding a phosphodiesterase. esterase, the uh, concentration of cyclic DIGMP inside the cell will increase. So same uh, same set of experiments, do uh, uh, donor strain help uh, transfer or shot with the plasmid into R11. And then um, uh, we uh, do colony screening to find uh, or strains that are overexpressing. And we do arabinose induction to check uh, the uh, phenotypes by uh, the, the overexpressing strains. And phenotypic characterization would involve, again, uh, uh, this is. Uh, So uh, I used only two of uh, characterization of the characterization experiments. Uh, one of one of which is the attachment assay. So it's an easy assay. Again, uh, uh, all we need to do is inoculate uh, a 96 well, uh, adjust the cells, uh, grow the cells initially, 
uh, until launch phase and adjust it to a uh, 0.2 optical density, inoculate the cells in uh, 96 wells or 24 wells, incubate, wash or remove the supernatant and then wash the cells and uh, uh, add a uh, uh, XTT and then incubate it further and then measure the absorbance at uh, a certain wavelength. Uh, similarly, for the uh, 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 one of the uh, easier assays as well was to uh, uh, check the motility uh, by growing cells to log phase, then in point inoculate so 1.1 1 .1, uh, microliter onto a soft agar uh, agar plate. So these are really soft agar plates, which allow would allow or would allow the cells to uh, move around the uh, surface of the agar. Incubate and then measure the quality diameter. So why these two assays? Because this would reflect the attachment assay would uh, reflect biofilm formation, and the and the motility assays would actually tell us whether uh, there's some info uh, uh, flagellar. Uh, there would be some effect on flagellar biosynthesis. So some results to show. Uh, we predicted about uh, uh, one, two, three, four nine uh, uh, genes encoding for uh, uh, proteins with GGD, F, and EL domains in R11, and uh, domain structure predictions show that uh, several would have, several of these proteins would have sensor domains. So this one would have the MHYT, this one would have the REC domain, and this two would have the GAF domain. So remember that uh, I wanted to actually delete all of these genes one at a time, but um, um, again, uh, the, the challenge is in, in that particular uh, part of the experiment. And what we uh, were excited about was also the prediction of PILZ domain proteins. Now, PILZ domain proteins are known to be um, cytic DIGMP receptors. So, okay, uh, it's as if we are... Uh, uh, we have a potential uh, uh, cytic GMP receptor protein in the uh, Nutella R11. And also interestingly is that these two uh, PILSA domain proteins is, would encode, uh, uh, would actually, uh, or the genes encoding for the PILSA proteins would actually encode also a type 4 pilus you know, and a putative cellulose synthase. So the big question that we have is that if cytic DIGMP is available in the cell, would it actually regulate the type 4 pilos uh, for, for cells to actually modulate or express uh, type 4 pilos for attachment, as well as uh, the cellulose synthase, would the cells actually produce cellulose, which allow them, which is, a, which is an extracellular polysaccharide, which allows them also to stick to the surface. Um, just to share uh, uh, the results of the assay. Um, so we see here that uh, we've obtained only, a, of, of the 12, we've obtained only four mutant strains. But again, uh, nandun pa rin yung um, uh, is inspiration and motivation to push. So and the assay showed that, uh, wait, uh, compared to the wild type, uh, there is an increased biofilm formation in uh, this uh, uh, mutant strains. Similarly, with motility, we noticed that compared to the wild type, so this particular mutants would have reduced motility. So it's, it's actually starting to make sense. Now, probably these particular genes are actually involved. And when we look back, yung, yung potential strains that we would consider for further studies would be the mutant containing this particular gene that has a rect domain and a mutant strain that has a uh, uh, with a protein containing a GAF domain and a mass domain. And this ones would be, these proteins would be involved in uh, oxygen redox or light sensing or one, this particular one would probably be involved in uh, or uh, probably function as a response regulator and therefore be involved in signal transduction. Um, the overexpression experiments, as you can see here, is not 
uh, that uh, promising because uh, uh, even with the Rabinong's induction, so we didn't see differences in uh, 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 modulation of the, the phenotype in terms of uh, attachment. So, parang, uh, so sometimes when you can, when you, when you see uh, uh, a result such as this, you would then think, na, Uy, saan kaya na, na, uh, uh, what factors would have contributed to uh, the uh, the experiment? So probably. Uh, the the construct is not as uh, the gene the gene encoding for the cyclase or the phosphodiesterase was not properly expressed. Probably the con concentration of arabinose was uh, low to do the uh, expression of the particular protein. So a number of questions can still actually be uh, uh, sought for. But uh, again, uh, yun nga. Uh, we wanted to look into uh, the cyclic DGMP signaling network in uh, in in Nutella Italica R11, but again, that 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 would entail a lot of uh, work as well. But at least we've uh, touched the surface to say so. So uh, one one of the more important uh, uh, one of the more important. Uh, thing to do would be to identify a particular environmental keeper signal. Ano ba yung uh, uh, signal that would allow uh, the cells of uh, Nutella Italic R11 to attach to the particular surface? Come to think of it that uh, if it attacks the uh, seaweed surface, so mag, mag counter attack din yung uh, uh, seaweed by producing, by uh, doing an oxidative burst, you now killing this particular uh, organism or R11. But you know, is that a particular signal? So that that's still, uh, that particular uh, um, area of research is also in place. Um, again, we've identified two uh, promising genes that encode for proteins with the AL domain. Would these actually be, uh, 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 we would still be determining, trying to determine the functions. So would these uh, proteins act as a big one is cyclase or would, would, would these proteins act as a, a phosphodiesterase? But if you see here, uh, since it has uh, uh, GGDF domains only, so likely, what is the likelihood that this would act as diguanylase cyclase? And of course, one of the more interesting discoveries that we have was the, the, the uh, uh, finding that uh, there are pilsa domain proteins which are uh, which would bind uh, cyclic DIGMP and uh, affect uh, certain phenotypes of uh, the cell, which includes uh, motility, bioformation, and virulence. Uh, you know, we, to try to come up with a model wherein you can actually we know all the functions of this uh, uh, particular proteins. So these are the actually kulang yata yung nasa illustration, uh, uh, but uh, again uh, some of these uh, proteins are actually transmembrane proteins, uh, signified by these uh, blue bars. Uh, and then interestingly, yeah, based on the prediction that PLZ domains transmembrane protein. Also, some of the proteins are actually uh, uh, floating around. So, but uh, what are their particular function? And suffice it to say that. To come up with a model, or uh, to to um, verify or uh, uh, come up with uh, the cyclic DGMP signaling network in in R11 would involve a collaboration with uh, a good number of microbiologists, molecular biologists, of course, chemists, maybe Sister Albert, who is a chemi uh, chemical biologist, and then uh, and Sister. Uh, uh, Elegado, who is also a molecular biologist or molecular microbiologist, and of course, bioinformaticians and computational biologists, because again, a lot of genomes have actually been, a lot of bacterial genomes have actually been sequenced, and so marami talagang data that need to be analyzed. Now, in, 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 in this particular case, yung, ano yung mga uh, genes that would actually be uh, involved in psychology signaling network in a particular uh, bacterial species. And I think with that, I'd like my talk. So thanks you for your attention and good day, everyone. 
It was really an interesting and relevant talk. So thank you, Dr. Galia, for sharing your expertise with us, especially on the biofilm mode of life and the other lifestyle decision-making in bacteria. So there you go. You have heard the three distinguished speakers thoroughly discussed to us the different topics of our 14th regional convention and scientific meeting. It was a great talk and presentation indeed. So I know some still have their questions and clarifications with the things that caught their attention in, and interest to our, um, as our speaker delivered their lecture. So at this juncture, we will proceed to the open forum. May I call in again our speakers, Dr. Francisco B. Allegado, Dr. Albert Ramos, and Dr. Raymond S. Regalia. So with me are the questions from our participants. They sent it by direct message. So are our speakers ready? Okay, so Mamzelle, can you pin our three speakers? Oh. Okay, so for the first question, so this is for our three speakers. So Dr. Elegado, Dr. Rosana, and Dr. Regalia. What are the challenges you encounter in doing microbiological researches in the time of pandemic? Again, to our three speakers, what are the challenges you encounter in doing microbiological researches in the time of pandemic? Anyone po, sino gusto mauna? Sir, yes, sir, elegant. Yeah, well, it's terribly challenging. <laughs> because uh, uh, especially during those times when we have a lot of cases, uh, uh, that time, uh, hindi lang level-level, pero talagang uh, no one is allowed to enter the laboratory. Uh, so really, you cannot do uh, enough work and more especially for students so challenging they they uh i had um, master's degree and mph degree students were in they could not uh, do their their uh, thesis because of uh you know they are prevented to enter the laboratory so uh, for two years uh, it's really very challenging and hopefully uh, it's easing up now. So one of my PhD students uh, from Lao, she's now uh, being able to work in our lab, being permitted to work. So yon. Yung masasabi ko. Thank you, Sir Legado. How about um, Dr. Regalia? Um, yes, uh, actually, probably uh, all three of us would actually would probably share the same sentiments. No, nakamis maglab actually ngayon. Uh, um, in terms of uh, yung, uh, laboratories are shut down, uh, I myself is actually currently involved in, uh, in a uh, project with the Bicol University College of Agriculture and Forestry. And then another project uh, is also coming in, but of course the limitations no, uh, paglabas, no, uh, would be uh, one major factor. And to do experiments in the lab would actually be um, important for, for our research. Um, I think isa pang point is, say for example, in, in uh, doing experiments like the ones I, I did in Sydney, for example, uh, especially uh, for because we need to characterize uh, the, mute, the growth rate of the mutants, for example. So I really have to go to the laboratory at an hour, on an hourly basis. So either you stay or you go home. And if you have experiments such as that, Major mahirap siya in the times of the pandemic. So, yeah, challenging, challenging, but I think uh, I'm, we are actually looking forward to uh, the, the, the normal uh, mode of life of, again <laughs> to say so. All right, so how about Dr. Rosana, sir? Yeah, uh, I, I guess I have a relatively interesting situation. Uh, so, back in the last week of February 2020, before the pandemic, I so decided to go home for a vacation in the Philippines from Canada. And then I decided at that time, I'm going to quarantine for 10 days. Then 
president declared, oh, we're going to do a lockdown. So I'm in my last year of my PhD uh, that time. And natrap ako dito sa Pilipinas ng six months. Hindi ako nakabalik sa Canada. Uh, as a student, maraming challenges. Pero I tried to actually find avenues para So, ito dito, tukol na great law ko ka lately. Okay. Uh, uh, nagkaroon ng three papers with uh, Central Mindanao University, uh, with uh, UP Los Banos, and then there's actually one in uh, Visaya State University in Leyte. Uh, so, nung nakabalik ako ng Canada, unfortunately, yung actual PD ko kasi is... Uh, it's an interdisciplinary field of entomology, forestry, microbiology, and chemistry. So, namatay lahat yung pine trees ko, namatay yung lahat ng, ng beetles ko, lahat ng fungus ko hindi ko na mag-grow. Kasi in the absence of the microbiologist in in a group of a chemistry uh, research group, no one is actually, you know, uh, trained to handle those. So, na-extend pa ako ng isang taon kasi kailangan ko buhayin uli yung mga details. Uh, so, yung actual PhD ko is on uh, sex pheromone um, genetic engineering in molds. So, kaya medyo iba yung topic na pag-resend ko dito to basically adhere dun sa, sa, sa team. Pero this pandemic really put us on a different, I guess, position but at the same time, look for the opportunities, which is what I tried to win. Thank you. Thank you, Tori. So indeed, the pandemic really changed us and it's really challenging. So thank you for sharing to us how did you overcome those challenges in um, doing microbiological researches during this time. So we are really looking forward to go. going back to the laboratory to work to work inside the laboratory, especially our student participants then. So for our next question we have here to Dr. Elegado, is nanotechnology the future solutions to environmental and health problems? Again, to Dr. Elegado, is nanotechnology the future solutions to environmental and health problems? Well, it's just one of those tools that we can use, but uh, it's an important tool. For example, uh, for, for the uh, health uh, problem, COVID uh, pandemic problem, nanotechnology has contributed a lot in the development of these uh, RNA vaccines. So uh, they were able to develop this uh, very effective coating uh, using uh, lipid nanomaterials so that uh, the, the vaccine will be easily be uh, I mean, uh, and the RNA will be stable enough, and then, then the, but can easily be, uh, I mean, uh, incorporated in our system, so the immune system will uh, will act upon it. So it's one uh, big uh, contribution of nanotechnology. And in terms of diagnostics, uh, uh, it can also be a good uh, contributing uh, tool. It's just a tool. And all the others, microbiology, biotechnology, uh, chemistry, and then uh, bioinformatics. All of this, uh, as uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Regala and Dr. Uh, uh, Albert, uh, all of this will have some, you know, contributions to, to, to uh, yeah, for, for uh, solving our, our uh, problems nowadays. And technology, uh, we need really to, to explore a lot in this one. So it's possible. I hope that answers the question. Yes, sir. So thank you, Dr. Elegado. So for the next question, this one is directed to Dr. Rosana. So I guess this is from one of our student participants. In relation to the topic, bacteria from Mount Mayon soils found with potential antibiotic anti-cancer properties. Okay, so I don't know. If he or she is asking if pure isolate puva ang ginamit laban sa cancer cells, or is it a mixture of other solutions? If pure, what type of cancer cells are successful na na-inhibit? The follow-up question, if mixture siya, 
hindi ba magiging factor for inhibition yung hinalo na ibang chemical or sa pag-inhibit ng cancer cell? Thank you for that question. Um, I guess I wasn't really able to describe you. Uh, so basically, uh, it's considered a crude extra. So it's an extra uh, utilizing ethyl acetate. And then in the process, you remove that ethyl acetate and get that uh, mixture of metabolites, secondary metabolites in this case, which are excreted out of the cells. Uh, Nag-undergo siya ng fractionation. Uh, so, hindi lang siya basta mixture. It, it's the part where uh, it's mainly hydrophobic. Uh, it's at the 80% isopropanol uh, solubility. So, isopropanol relative to water is um, more hydrophobic. Uh, when we test the cells, we always uh, reconstitute this lyophilized mixture uh, in certain solvents, for example, DMSO or uh, butanol or um, acetonitrile. And of course, in the process, you're testing those solvent controls, whether they, they will affect your uh, test uh, sample, for example, uh, the cancer cell lines. Uh, and so far, wala siyang effect, at least for the constant vision in volume that's been utilized. Uh, in terms of what cancer cell lines uh, we have tested, we have tested the human colorect colorectal cancer cell line uh, being uh, colon cancer is the third uh, leading cause of death for a cancer group. Um, at the same time, when I was still in Canada, I was able to test uh, MDMBA231, that is the human breast cancer cell line, and not just the regular uh, breast cancer cell line, that is the metastatic. So that's the type of uh, breast cancer cells that actually uh, metastasize or expand in other organs. And we have seen also uh, actual inhibition of the invasion. So the metastasis has metastatic uh, response of the cells were completely halted. But again, uh, these are all uh, uh, considered mixture. Uh, when I performed the so-called LCMSMS to predict uh, and associate those molecules with the genome, uh, it an NRPS product, non-ribosomal peptide synthase, which is actually very rich in uh, phenylalanine, proline, and uh, tryptophan moiety. So mukhang similar siya sa molecule na na-identify namin with the Algerian isolate. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you, Dr. Rosana. So I hope that answers the question of our dear students. So as a Mikolana, um, it really caught our attention to project nyo on this um, about the novel bacteria in the cells of Mount Mayon. For the next question for Dr. Raymond, so this is again from one of our student participants. I'm just curious po, if there are already efforts that are investigating the possibility of using CDGMP pathway as a target for antibiotics. Thank you. Yes, um, that's actually a good good question. In fact, most of the studies nowadays, kasi nga, nagboom talaga yung, yung field of uh, second messenger signaling, so including uh, psychic DIGMP. And psychic DIGMP is not just a small molecule controlling this. Um, uh, phenotypes and you know, in terms of uh, uh, targeting, so the potential for targeting proteins that would encode, encode, that encode the cyclases or the phosphodiesterases are a, a hot research area actually. So, um, and may studies na din that, again, depending on the, ano, ano yung uh, gusto mong gawin with the organism. So, uh, uh, you can target this particular proteins for you to say, for example, inhibit bioformation or motility and therefore inhibit attachment to a particular surface. Or say, for example, uh, from a biotechnology pr perspective where you want to uh, actually produce more of the polysaccharides which you want to use it for some applications in the industry, for example, you can actually modulate also the levels of cyclic GMP in the cell for it to, for, 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 for the cell to be uh, to produce more of the extracellular polysaccharide. 
So, madaming, ano, madaming uh, avenues for research on this particular pathways. Thank you. Yes, thank you again, Dr. Regalia. So, to Dr. Regalia again and to Dr. Eligado, we have a question in the chat box. This is from one of our PSM people officers, Dr. Renegado. So, as a Bicolano microbiologist, what can you suggest as an important microbiology research undertaking in Bicol? Uh, thank you, uh, Ma'am Remy, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Renegado, for this question. Well, uh, well actually, uh, I, I was no, uh, from, as, from a Bicolano uh, standpoint, uh, I would suggest the three piece, something like uh, parang the West, you know. Problem, unique problem in our uh, in our uh, region, and then the products, what would be the unique products that we can work with, and the possibilities, uh, unique possibilities that we've got, we have there. So uh, for problems and products, I guess for example in Katanduan is uh, yeah, abaka Katanduan is the uh, I mean, abaka producing region, uh, I mean, province in, in, in uh, the Philippines. And if hopefully, again, it can be also be revived in other parts of Bicol, like uh, before Alba is also going, is uh, producing it. So, uh, the, the, the uh, trying to, to identify a possible, uh, you know, varieties that would be resistant to these viruses and uh, diseases be very uh, useful for for our region and also seaweed farming in source one really is, is really uh it has been uh before no it's a good uh, dollar earning uh, uh activity or uh i uh, mean uh, but now because of the problems that's indicated by dr raymond no? the ice ice problem and other uh, pathogens and also the quality of our seaweed products for example uh pathogens and then uh, uh, if it's being used for food. So another one is the typhoon prone uh, <clears throat> of, of Bicol region. I think uh, microbiology research there should be more focused on yeah, the development of, uh, of uh, safe and uh, readily available food during typhoon, something like that. So a lot of possibilities. And of course, uh, just like a uh, Dr. Uh, Rosanna's no, Albert uh, uh, research uh, on the exploration of uh, a lot of possibility from extremophiles. So, because uh, really have uh, a lot of opportunities uh, for microbiology and biotechnology research. So, yun po. Uh, <laughs> I hope I can have another. Uh, life or career. So this time, sabi ko naman talaga mag-research. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Egal, yeah? Yes, Pop. Yun, uh, agree with Sir uh, Eligado. Yun nga, number one, I think primarily, since nandun din yung research interest ko, yung... Uh, uh, I'm not sure actually kung meron pang seaweed farms sa, sa Sorsogon, but probably there, there, there are farmers pa din growing seaweed and we have to address also yung, uh, yun nga, yung occurrence ng ice ice disease particularly in, in, this air, in these farming areas. Of course, aquaculture would also be a good, uh, a good uh, research area. So uh, 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 marine, anything marine microbiology or aquatic microbiology, even terrestrial microbiology. And all Uh, Dr. Albert's uh, research interest, particularly on extremophiles, no, maraming volcan at hot springs sa Bicol na obviously kailangan pa explore ano mga microorganisms nandun, ano yung mga potential of these microorganisms, can we get uh, bioactive compounds from them, can we actually get uh, uh, 
other other useful uh, products from these microorganisms. Madami po actually. Uh, and yun nga, maganda, maganda yung uh, with, with all of these uh, uh, possible research themes, maganda yung collaborate, collaborative uh, perspective no mga SUCs then for example no because uh, it would matter that uh, we help we help each other out because alaki naman ng Bicol region and per per province madaming uh, madaming uh, pwedeng explore actually okay so thank you to Dr. Elegado and Dr. Gali for sharing some of the possible researches in microbiology that we can conduct here in the Bicol region so I hope you must student participants natin could get some of some ideas and also our professionals taking their masters and um, doctorate degrees so for the next question i have here for dr rosana this was sent by a direct message what is your assessment about the outlook of the country's drug discovery research and discovery program do you see pharmaceutical innovation as an emerging economic sector in the philippines uh, thank you for that uh, very relevant uh, question. Um, I, I'm thinking if I'm in the position to actually comment on this, considering that I'm part of the national program on drug discovery, uh, the Las Lunas. Um, I guess one thing that uh, I can share at least was there will be a call for proposal uh, effective March 1 until the 31st. Uh, so it's just a few days from now. Um, uh, basically, uh, the direction, there are two major stream in, in the Toklas Lunas program of the national government, uh, one of which centers on herbal drugs. So this type of um, medicine uh, doesn't necessarily need to uh, identify the key molecules as well as its uh, molecular mechanism by which it treats certain infection or diseases. Uh, there are three in the, in the pipeline that's already been approved. Uh, this will be the the Lagundi, the Sambong, and the Tawa Tawa, uh, all of which undergone uh, several million dollar, million peso uh, support from the government to, uh, to standardize the herbal drugs. Uh, to basically have at least a, a reproducible and repeatable uh, effect. Uh, yan yung mga short type of research na priority. The second one, which is more on the pharmaceutical specific molecule that's been elucidated, structure has been identified, even uh, chemical uh, analog production has been um, resolved. That is a 10 to 15 year type of extensive research. Even our experience in Canada, I was I actually got COVID when I was testing the, the analog that our group developed for the national government in Canada. Uh, I'm the biologist, so I handle the viral titers. That, that is something that state universities or uh, you know, our, our level of research requires big pharmaceutical companies' help. So I would say uh, look into the, those possibilities, especially I want to add this to, to the response of Dr. Elegado and um, Dr. Regalia on what opportunities people may actually uh, consider. Uh, so those environments, uh, you, you can maybe have a proposal and look into uh, not just the PCHRD or the Health Council sectoral group, but also Picard, sure There are nicer programs as well. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. And follow up question for that. So, how do we get our SUCs in the regions more involved in drug discovery research? Um, the, the typical mandate uh, uh, regarding that Professor Vargas is the uniqueness of, let's say, a provincial sort of, um, I don't know, like seaweeds maybe, uh, that is unique to the source of one area. Then 
establishing a NICER, which is a national center for, for that particular product would be the avenue. For example, there are several uh, NICER programs, not just for health, or microbiology, there will be agricultural sectors like sea truce will be uh, somewhere in um, Nueva Ecija or nicer for seeds. I think it's in, in Ilo, Ilo, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, it would be nice if uh, societies like ESM will uh, look into the uniqueness on a per province basis and how that will fit into the national government's mandate of establishing centers that not only develop uh, the actual technology, but also to teach students to, to increase capacity building uh, of, of the region. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, sir. So for those who ask, um, interested in sa question, and so I hope nasagot ni sir yung tanong natin. Okay, and another question from the chat box. This is to Dr. Egalia. Um, from Sorsogon State University. We ask Dr. Galia if there is a chance, possibility to prohibit the production of CDGMP in order for, in order to prevent biofilms from forming in different surfaces. Sir, sir. kakain na, sir. Um, yes, so you see that... Sir, kakain na, sir. We're on mute po, Dr. Galia. Uh, thank you. So again, yung nga, uh, biofilms are formed generally by a cell secreting these extracellular polysaccharides. Now, um, for for them to actually uh, prevent uh, biofilm formation, you, you would actually have to target uh, the cycle that the diguanylate cyclase is, or those proteins that would encode GGDF uh, uh, domain proteins. But the thing is, yung nga, because of the multiplicity known uh, you know, this uh, uh, proteins and uh, different species would contain different number of proteins, uh, we have to know first uh, which of these are actually functional. So uh, again, uh, and to, to do that, we have to first determine uh, uh, by experiments to, to, to look into these uh, uh, proteins, whether they are expressed or whether they are functional at the biofilm stages of, of uh, mold or biofilm mode of life. So yun nga, number one, target uh, uh, target um, uh, the DGC proteins, or probably we can also target the PILZ domain proteins, which are the cyclic digen binding proteins. Uh, again, a number of uh, possibilities, but we still have to look at yung, uh, and explore uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, particular proteins, kung ano ba talaga yung totoong function. So thank you. Yes, so this is um, still for you, sir. This is a follow-up question from the previous question. Since CDGMP is associated with the various virulence factors, is it possible po to use the pathway to target a specific virulence factor? Or is it an all-in-one package where in once manipulated, all virulence factors associated is affected? Uh, yun, uh, that's actually a good question. Again, papasok pa din yung uh, multiplicity factor. No? And uh, who's, who's, uh, which genes are producing the, the cyclic DIGMP and then which particular target. So talagang very, very broad yung area of research nitong uh, signal transduction uh, or, or signaling mechanisms ng bacteria. Kasi yun nga, we still have to pinpoint which uh, of these proteins are actually doing something for the bacterial cell, be it in terms of viral formation, motility, or the virulence factors. And I like the R11 uh, uh, namin, we still have to do some more work to really look into the particular virulence factors no, no, uh, strain. So uh, uh, again, yun, uh, it all boils down to uh, looking at uh, uh, individual GGDF or EAL domain proteins para ma-target mo yung particular, particular pathway. And in this case, dun sa question, kung nangyari uh, virulence genes, uh, virulence genes, or virulence factor genes. Okay, so thank you again, Dr. Amregalia. So we also have here for Dr. Rosana. Clarification lang po sana, if you're affected by the anti-cancer property or the cell lines, or the pathways signaling the formation of neoplasms? 
Uh, at the moment, we don't have uh, data regarding the neoplasm, but essentially it's the uh, cell division of the human cell lines. It's limited to that. Uh, one, um, there is uh, not an issue, but there's the challenge of scaling up our fermentation efforts. Second, uh, the access to um, uh, mammalian cell sort of tissue culture in this time of pandemic. Uh, so, and of course, financing this type of uh, basic research without the support of, I guess, pharmaceutical industry or such, because that, that, that's a long pipeline, actually. Uh, yeah. We're just scratching the tip of the iceberg at the moment. Thank you, sir. So, um, as, much as, as much as you would like to answer all your questions, maybe this will be our last or second to the last question. So this is for our three speakers. So good morning. We ask all the microbiology researchers, what made you choose to become a microbiologist? What makes you choose microbiology and who inspire, inspires you to be one? So maybe this are our students na kailangan pa ng motivation and inspiration to pursue microbiology. Anyone who can answer first? Yeah. I think uh, for me, microbiology uh, approach <laughs> I was uh, uh, telling in my story, uh, initially uh, engineering, chemical engineering, or uh, some kind of uh, agricultural engineering talaga yung ating, uh, field. But uh, because of my work, yun, uh, I, I have to learn microbiology. And I found out that uh, really it's so useful uh, uh, sa aking field. So yung fermentation, kailangan ng microbiology. So yun, pinagigihan ko na lang <laughs> ang field ng micro. And you know, nowadays talaga ang bilis ng ano, sa development siya, uh, microbiology. Uh, for example, with uh, yung ating mga gene uh, deletion, uh, gene editing, yung CRISPR-Cas9, kailangan matutunan natin yan. At these are becoming simple techniques. Malami na siya. So, napaka-exciting ano, eh, ng microbiology kaya hindi ko siya iniwan. Eh. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin. <laughs> so, yan lang. Uh, microbiology chose me, uh, not me. <laughs> Parang ganun. Thank you, sir. About um, Dr. Um, Rosana. I guess my story is more of um, a childhood uh, experience. So um, I vividly remember at the age of four, I uh, saw my mother who was in fisheries uh, how to use the microscope. And at that time, mga fish on samples yung tinitingnan nato. So a lot of uh, microalgae uh, from synodesmos to uh, Anagina, um, I, I don't know. I, I find it amusing na at, at that time I'm seeing shapes of, and different colors and shades na somehow consciously or subconsciously I've chose uh, biology and specifically major in microbiology and would be less fun. Um, I, I would say it, it's the passion then. Uh, Kasi na, nakita ko, because uh, my mom is in fisheries and my um, father ko ay farmer, uh, may avenue to utilize microorganisms in those two fields, uh, especially in the Philippine context. So just like uh, Sir uh, Elegado mentioned, um, I, I think the fundamental and basic skills in microbiology is needed in this present day age interdisciplinary uh, fields. Maintaining a culture, how pure you are, that is critical for any work. Uh, it, it's difficult to work on something that, that is contaminated. Contaminated for me is the, the worst sort of word I can hear of for any sort of work. Because one, it invalidates, I think, the data and somehow questions my skills if I get things contaminated. So, yeah, so, thanks. How about Dr. Regalia? Um, 
uh, let's go back to Sir Gatnet. Um, yun, uh, uh, high school, uh, my dad brought home a, a microscope, so probably similar to uh, Sir Albert. Tapos yun, uh, gupit-gupit ng mga dahon, observe it under the microscope. And then, but the, 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 the uh, major factor that actually uh, made me choose microbiology was uh, in, at UP, uh, UPLB, General Microbiology or Gen Micro 1. So the first time I saw bacterial colonies on a you know, your very, very first experiment where in, we are actually culturing uh, bacteria and then saw uh, colonies on a plate. Yun, dun ako nagkanan. Oy, I, I like to explore more about uh, bacteria. And of course, maraming, you know, uh, of course, uh, microbiology was indeed very difficult sa UPLB. Probably Sir Albert also can, can attest to this. Now, we have very, very good professors as well na na-inspired kami to pursue actually uh, uh, microbiology as, as our field of uh, research. And uh, yun, Again, if you look at, and of course, nag, ano na lang to, the interest heightened because a lot of discoveries are, in, are being made in terms of microbiology and in terms of uh, also microbiology being the, the foundation for molecular biology as well. Of course, E. coli. So again, there, there would be no uh, molecular biology if not for, for E. coli. So I mean, again, a lot, lot to explore in terms of uh, the, the field of microbiology. But yun po, yun, uh, the first time I saw bacterial colony in a Di petri dish growing on an agar, uh, that was, uh, that made me yeah. choose microbiology. All right, so thank you to our speakers for answering the questions of our dear participants. So, sana for our student participants, um, mas na-inspire kayo sa mga senior at penenta ng ating speakers based on their personal experience. So, We'll cut the Q&A session at this portion, but nevertheless, we will still be um, collecting all your all the unanswered questions for our speakers, and we'll try to send their responses to you. Okay, so at, at this point, we'll, we really appreciate the friend. Sense, time, and with others. So in connection, we have a small token of our appreciation now to award the certificate of appreciation to our resource speakers. May I read the citation? Philippine Society for Microbiology Incorporated, Bicol Chapter, extends this certificate of commendation to Francisco B. Alegado in recognition of his invaluable contribution and expertise as resource speaker during the 14th ESM Bicol Chapter Regional Convention and Scientific Meeting with the theme, Challenges and Opportunities in Microbiology and Biotechnology, a Bicolano Experience, held on February 23 to 24, 2022, via Zoom. Given this 23rd day of February 2022, signed Marilu P. Barcella, President, ESM Bicol Chapter. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Eligado. The same certificate of commendation is hereby awarded also to Dr. Albert Ramos R. Rosana. And the same certificate of commendation is hereby awarded to Dr. Raymond S. Regalia. So, at this point, may we request our, um, host, our technical support to um, have a screenshot with the, the awarding of certificate to our um, resource speakers. So, just mabalas po sa ating um, tatlong magagaling na speakers for this morning. So, at this point, may we request also our participants to kindly turn on their cameras for the photo, of, photo opportunity with our speakers and guests. So, as of now, we are um, 301. We are 301 in the Zoom meeting room. So, we have... 13 frames all in all. So please show us your bright smiles in 3, 2, 1. So please smile 13 times. So hindi natin alam kung saan frame po tayo kasama. So our technical support are doing their um, screenshots.
damit-damit ang smile lang po tayo. Okay na po? Yes po. Okay. So thank you ma'am. So thank you so much our dear participants for staying with us until this time. So I know malapit na mag-lunch time. So now, um, the link to the evaluation form, um, it will be flashed on the screen. Okay, so the link to the evaluation form is flashed on the screen and it will also be posted in the chat box. So please do not forget to accomplish the evaluation form for the day one for our 14th Regional Convention and CNP Committee. Your evaluation is important for us to continuously improve and offer you the best activities in the future. This will also be the basis for sending you the electronic copy of your certificate of participation. So, wag po muna tayong mag-relieve, hindi pa po tayo tapos because at this juncture, we will proceed to the oath taking of the new members of the Philippine Society for Microbiology Nicole Chapter. So, as our registration as our registration closed yesterday, we have a total of 37 new members. So in the Zoom meeting, they will be receiving an invitation for the breakout room. So for 37 new members, kindly accept the invitation and take your oath. So this will be administered by our PSM Incorporated President, Dr. Donna May C. Papa. Again, for our new members, kindly accept the invitation to enter the breakout room. Recording stopped. While for the remaining participants in the main room, um, as our new members are transferring to the breakout room and are taking their oath, I would like to utilize this time to thank our sponsors, the people and institution who played an important role in the success of our convention. First, the Partido State University, Goa Kamari Minister, headed by its president, Dr. Raul Bradisina, for allowing us to house our technical and support staff for the second time as we host this virtual convention. This is through the ICT Management Office, headed by Dr. Renel Atole, and with the assistance of the supportive and hardworking staff, Mr. Jade Sarmiento. We would also like to thank our PSM National Board, headed by Dr. Donna Misi Papa. We also have some other officers from the national who are present right now. So I've seen Kanina, Dr. Ursula Bigo, Urs Ursula Bigo, the PSM National Treasurer, who is with us. And we can't forget our sponsors, who have been with PSM Incorporated for the past years and is supportive to all its endeavor. May it be the PSM National or its regional chapters. So we have Procter & Gamble Philippines, 3M Philippines, ESCO Philippines, and Defensil. To know more of them and what do they offer, let us watch this video. Thank you. 